G'day, and welcome to this Visions of Cast tutorial. This tutorial is all about colour palettes. For these examples, I'm just using a Mandelbrot set fractal here. Visions of Chaos includes thousands of sample palette files which you can use. To open these, click on the Browse Colour Palettes button. The mouse wheel or the scroll bar can scroll up and down. Once you see a palette you like, just click on it and it will load in. And then let's try this one. That one's nice, got a lot of contrast in there. So there are all these palettes for you to play with and experiment with. So once you have a nice looking fractal or you found a nice spot and the colours just don't work for you, there's plenty there to play with. Even with these thousands of colours available, there will be times when you want to tweak an existing palette or create a completely new palette to suit your needs. You can use the colour palette editor for this. When you first start the colour palette editor, you will see the existing palette previewed here. And you can select other existing palettes either through this file list or by clicking the browse button. The first modify colors tab has functions to tweak existing palettes. You can add or reduce the red, green, blue components or the YUV color space components. You can make the palette darker or brighter, less contrast or more contrast. And you can shift the RGB, which cycles through changing the reds to the greens, the greens to the blues, and then the blues back to the reds. You can invert palettes. To show what the wrap and double do, we need a palette that's fairly simple, and let's just, uh, this one should do for the purpose. Now, if you have a color palette like this one that has that doesn't wrap around smoothly, it just goes from black to the white and then sharply back to black, you will notice that within the fractal you get this really sharp, ugly edge there as it wraps around the palette. And so to help fix that, there's the wrap button here. Now what that does is it takes the current palette and it wraps it around itself another time. And so now it goes from the black to the white but then back again through the palette in reverse to the black. And so what that does is now it stops those sharp breaks and so you can have more of a smooth colours there. Double takes your palette and it just doubles it and so there's now there's two of the bars or four of the bars. So in certain palettes here, in those sections that were fairly smooth colour, you now get that much more detail in there. So that can help sometimes if you want to increase that noisiness or busyness in a fractal. And that pretty much covers this tab. The next tab is blend colors. Blend colors is all about taking a small set of colors and smoothly blending them to create a new palette. With this again, the default here, you've got a simple Roy G. Biv rainbow. And if you click blend there, seven colors, it gets you a nice rainbow effect. Reset just clears them all to white. Random button selects various random sets. We can blend that, apply that. So here's a quick example of how contrast can help. This here seems a bit too washed out and um, gray for my liking. So if we just bump the contrast a few notches, make it a little bit darker, and then apply. It's a lot more, it really pops more. Not that that's really a super pleasant palette, but you know, you can try random a few more times. Um, let's see, that one might work. Uh, the color wheel button uses principles from from color theory to um, select a set of colors, you can do this as a kind of 
Yeah, um, six tone. Okay, blend those. Nothing too interesting there. You get a bunch of rainbow basic palettes there. The next colors from image button can take a photo or picture you like and scan the colors within it to make a new palette. So for example, if we just load up, let's say we use this rainforest picture here that finds a lot of nice greens. So if we want um, 16 greens, blend that. That's a nice quick way of getting a, another simple palette. Again, let's try this Kandinsky. I think that one should be a bit darker, more contrast. Probably punch that a bit. Oh, there we go. Okay, the next button, random based on specified color. If you'd like a a series of colors based on, say, a yellow palette. You want yellowish colors. You can click that and it will select other colors based on that base color. And so you get yellowish colors or orange. Have orange like colors if you like. The darken every second color button is for palettes like this one that are a bit too pastel and even colored and so if you darken every second color and you can click that a few times to make them even more dark and then re-blend and then you apply so that's a simple way to get a bland palette showing more details within the fractal if you want to choose your own colors you can you can just click on each of the buttons pick any color you want Let's just do a very gaudy red green blue and then back to red. So you can blend. Or fade out blend. Which it takes each colour and then fades it out to black. And so you get this more. Really these broken step effect. And in some fractals it can work. Most of the time I prefer a nice smooth palette that goes from one colour to the next. The fade in blend just does that in reverse. Neon blend goes black color black, and so you get these more nice stripe effects. The stripe blend takes each color and stripes them as single colors, and so your palette is, is going red, green, blue, red, 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 blah, 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 the whole way through. That's sometimes useful for cellular automata palettes, which you want to have, have a different color for each state. And that pretty much covers the blend colors. The curve blends tabs use various mathematical functions to set the red, green, and blue values of a palette. And so you can click on these. Sine uses sine waves, just simple curves. Multiple sine waves is two or more sine waves added together and averaged. You get these more complex waves. Uh, the IQ is based on a cosine formula. Perlin uses Perlin noise function, wraps around at both sides, and so it's always a nice smooth palette. Simplex is a different version of a noise function, and it can make some nice palettes as well. Simplex plus Perlin uses both noise types and adds them together. Multiple Perlin just takes two or more Perlin noise curves and uses those. Random walk starts each curve and goes up and down a step. It can make some nicely detailed palettes depending on what you're doing. Train faults another method that just creates the palette. Curve blends 2 is more buttons which didn't fit on curve blends, and so you've got more buttons to play with. You can just sit here and click them until you get something you like. That might be nice. Yeah, still a bit too 
too busy there. There's too many fine details. So maybe with that, let's just try, if we blur that out a bit, bring up the contrast, now apply. Yeah, that's still... There we go, that's starting to look okay now. So it's just a few little tweaks and clicking around. You can find some new and interesting um, palettes to use. And the final tab, Matrix Multiply. This takes each palette entry's RGB values, multiplies them with a matrix, and then makes a new palette. And so you can just click the random here and you'll get different, different versions. So it's the same basic structure, except you're just getting new RGB values or tweaking them slightly. And again, I think that's a bit too washed out, so we can just darken it, contrast it up a bit. There we go, that looks okay. So it's all fairly simple. You don't need to know any maths or anything complex. It's just all clicking buttons until you get something you like. And now one tip that should be mentioned, if you do find a palette you like, make sure you save it. If you found a nice new palette, use it in a fractal, and you save the fractal without saving the palette, and the next time it loads the fractal, the palette specified won't be your new one because it wasn't saved, so you lose all the colors. So remember that every time you create a palette you want to use in the future, save it first and then start playing with it. I've also included a link to a blog post of mine that covers these various curve types and the blending functions in more detail. You can find that in the description. So that concludes this tutorial on colours and colour palettes. If you would like to see a specific feature or mode within Visions of Chaos covered in future tutorials, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.